Sick of getting blisters? Stop slipping and just be comfortable with Pure Grip Socks Pro. Great fit, great comfort, lots of grip, and an even better price. Available now at puregripsocks.com. When you think of Mizuno football boots, you probably picture their top of the line, super expensive made in Japan line. But of course, not everybody has the budget for 300 plus dollar football boots, which is why they also make takedown models where for the longest time outside of the Japanese market, Mizuno takedowns haven't been readily available. Over the last year or so, that's been changing. And the ones I have inside this box are not only extremely well priced, they're also extremely high quality for what they cost. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the Mizuno Morelia Neo 4 Pro, what is technically the first takedown model in the current Neo lineup, where Mizuno does things a little bit different in that they have two top end made in Japan models, the beta at 320, the non beta at 290. Then they have a non made in Japan elite variation. Those are gonna run you $200. And then finally, we have what is technically a takedown model in the Pro, bearing a retail price of $130. And of course, like most takedown models, there are some differences when compared to the more expensive versions, but with Mizuno being a brand that is known for their high build quality and premium kangaroo leather materials, those are two features that you're still getting at this lower price point. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that these are as good as the top of the line made in Japan Neo 4 Beta at $320, but because of how good these are, I am suggesting that depending on what you're looking for, you could spend 60% less and still get a fantastic football boot experience. So with that in mind, we're gonna go over all the details of the Neo 4 Pro, talk about how they compare to the more expensive variations, predominantly what the main differences are, and of course, take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around, and if you are interested in a pair for yourself, you can pick them up below their normal retail price in a couple different colorways by way of some exclusive SR4U coupon codes via the link down below. And as always, if you enjoy the brutally honest reviews on the channel, don't forget to drop a like on the video and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my reviews of all all the latest football boots of 2024. So first things first, I wanna start out by pointing out some key differences when compared to all the current top end versions of the Neo 4. The first thing that you'll notice is that there is no external heel counter despite kind of an emboss shape of a heel counter. And even on some colorways, they build it in to make it look like a heel counter. Everything is fully internal. You also notice at the back, the construction is more traditional and kind of more along the lines of what you would find on a classic Morelia rather than the modern speed boot Morelia Neo. More padding back here, arguably more comfortable depending on personal preference, and definitely a little bit wider in terms of overall shaping. You'll also notice that this features a standard U-throat construction and standalone tongue, meaning that this compares most closely if you want to compare it to a top end model to the non-beta made in Japan variation, whereas the beta as well as the elite feature that one piece upper construction that only gives you that full enclosure, but also gives you kind of that textile based material through the midfoot where this utilizes again, like that non-beta variation, more of a synthetic leather that admittedly isn't quite as thin and soft as the $290 option, but still feels decently premium considering the price point. Where the sole plate is also a little bit different, utilizing a slightly different plastic, definitely on the thicker side, you're gonna find rivets in the heel as well as the tip of the toe for the sake of overall durability, something you won't find on the higher end models. And the studs themselves are just slightly bigger in shape compared to the Neo, which in theory would make the traction less aggressive, but that difference is extremely minimal and not one that I think very many people will notice. Thankfully though, arguably the core feature of the Morelia Neo series is carried over into this takedown model pro variation, and that is the kangaroo leather that you get through the forefoot that admittedly is not quite as soft as what you're gonna find from the $300 made in Japan variations, but it does feel more or less the same as what you'll find 
on the $200 Elite model. It's super soft, gets even softer as you wear them in, and it's kind of the perfect thickness for something that still falls into the speed boot category, giving you that kind of thinner barefoot feel for the ball, but still that little bit of padding that only premium kangaroo leather can provide, not to mention the ability for that leather to stretch in the forefoot and toe box area, giving you that customized fit and arguably better comfort than most speed boots that will not have a natural leather upper of course from the forefoot back it does transition into that synthetic material just like every other variation of the neo again not textile based so it's a little bit thicker through the midfoot than what you're going to find from the higher end options but from a thickness perspective i would say it's pretty consistent across the entire foot which is great when it comes to overall touch the lacing system runs down the middle super deep allowing for great overall adjustability and the tongue itself disappointingly is kind of this cheaper almost foam based material that is super flexible doesn't have a lot of structure to it but i personally would have liked something a little bit more premium nonetheless it's not really a deal breaker in terms of the overall experience and truthfully not an uncommon material to see on a lot of takedown models. I like the fact that it is thin, so it doesn't add any significant bulk across the top of the foot. Moving to the rear, like I mentioned, it is a different construction that's a little closer to a classic Morelia rather than a Morelia Neo, where you just have more padding through the back, a little bit of extra width, that solid internal plastic heel counter, which I really like. Again, more of a premium construction than I think you will find for most football boots at this price point. The build quality, I would say, is top tier for a takedown model. Internally, plenty of padding in the liner with this really soft kind of microfiber material. So no real issues with discomfort or slippage there whatsoever. Then the insole fully removable. And I really like the fact that it is just straight up foam, no liner on the surface. It has some texturing, as you can see, that really doesn't do much in terms of comfort, but certainly does look cool. And the insole itself is made from a single layer of this black foam. Nothing fancy, but again, pretty nice considering the price point. Moving to the base, I really like the overall feel of this sole plate and stud pattern. Again, it doesn't strike me as something that you would expect to find on a pair of takedown models. However, I'd be lying to you if I said that it felt as speed boot like as what you'll get from the higher end variations. It's more solid in terms of the underfoot feel, and it doesn't necessarily have that spring back sensation that you get from the higher end models. This feels a lot more traditional and trends more towards classic Morelia rather than modern Morelia Neo. Nonetheless, super solid through the midfoot and heel, a little bit more flexible through the forefoot and very fitting for the kangaroo leather construction that you have in that forefoot area of the foot. And then as far as the stud pattern is concerned, FG layout, all conical studs, technically the same as the Morelia Neos at higher price points. And from a feel and performance standpoint, pretty much identical in my experience. I know it's all conical studs, which is typically not associated with aggressive cuts and acceleration. However, give this a chance and I think you might be surprised. There's more bite to this stud pattern than you'd expect. And of course, in terms of being a pair of speed boots with conical studs, it's again, one of those unique characteristics of the Morelia Neo series. And then again, not to harp on the build quality of Mizuno, but having those rivets at the tip of the toe and the back of the heel only instill my confidence in the overall build quality of this football boot, where if you're looking to get the best bang for your buck, $130 on these feels like money well spent in terms of how well made they actually are. It's not all amazing news though, because when it comes to the weight of the Neo 4 Pro, especially being that this is technically a speed boot still, they're nowhere near as light as what you're gonna find from the high-end models. I have the $200 Elite model right here, both in the same size, 9.5 US. Let's see what the weight difference is, starting off with the Elite, which is more similar to the higher-end models than the Pro. Seven ounces exactly, the equivalent of 198 grams. Change the scale back to ounces, and we'll throw on the Pros, where you can see that they weigh in at 8.4 ounces, the equivalent of 239 grams. That's a little over an extra 40 grams, which is a significant amount of weight in terms of feel. Is it detrimental to the performance? Absolutely not. But if you're buying the Morelia Neo 4 Pro with the expectation that it's gonna have that lightweight speed boot feel, 
given that the Neo series is technically a speed boot, you might be a little bit disappointed at the overall weight. And truthfully, I'm a little disappointed too. On feet, there are some positives and negatives as it relates to the Morelia Neo 4 Pro. The positives are that they fit really well and are very comfortable. The negatives are that they really don't feel like the higher end Morelia Neos in any way at all, both because they're not nearly as light, but also because the shaping is just totally different. This relates way more to a standard classic Morelia rather than a Morelia Neo, which to many will be disappointing. In other words, if you're hoping for that speed boot feel, you're not necessarily getting it here. What you are getting instead is super soft kangaroo leather in the forefoot that only gets softer as you wear it in. The synthetic material through the midfoot has nice structure to it and does also soften up with a little bit of wear out of the box. I would say the boots are maybe a little bit stiffer than a lot of people would expect, but not in a way that feels uncomfortable, in a way where it just feels like they've used really nice materials that just need a little bit of time to wear in. The heel shaping is also totally different from a regular Morelia Neo and then it's just more traditional and a little bit more open and wide, which I think for a lot of people, they'll actually find more comfortable. And also surprisingly, the sides of the boot don't come up very high, which makes it look like they're quite narrow, when in reality they are, like I said, a very similar shape to something like a classic Morelia, where as long as you don't have ridiculously wide feet, these are gonna be suitable for most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US, and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you are looking to get a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, as a pair of takedown models, when it comes to what you get for your money, the Neo 4 Pro is pretty much as good as you're gonna find from any budget-friendly option. With that said, where I think you need to be a little bit careful with these is if your expectation is that these are going to feel anything like the top end Neos, whether it's the Elite model or either of the Made in Japan variations, because simply put, they don't feel like a pair of speed boots. These are much more Morelia than they are Morelia Neo, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but depending on what your expectations are, they could be wildly disappointing for you. If you're not after a pair of speed boots though, I think this is a wildly attractive option at that $130 price point, if you want something with that premium leather football boot feel. The only other alternative would be the also excellent and also $130 New Balance 442 version 2 Pro. As far as which one would be the better choice for you, I suppose that's for you to decide. From a build quality perspective though, I don't think there's anything as nice as these for the price.